Hi, this is John Buck. This week, for this video tonight, we're going to talk about stability. I explain how we, what the definition of stability is for a discrete time system and how we test for it or, or prove that a system is not stable. The basic definition or conceptual definition of stability is that bounded inputs give bounded outputs. So we're trying to look to say as long as we know that the input doesn't blow up, we know the output won't blow up either. More formally, the way we state this mathematically is we say that if the magnitude of x of n is less than or equal to some constant b for all time, then if the system is stable, we can find c, some other constant, so that the magnitude of the output, y of n, is always less than or equal to c. And that c may depend on the b, and we'll, we'll see some examples of how we find that. If you, uh, you like to think about these things visually, you can imagine if this is my uh, input to my system, and here's my output, what we're really talking about here is how far things go up and down. If you can imagine, like, maybe looking at this input on an oscilloscope, you can say, well, if, if I know, I don't know anything about the input except that maybe it, it's going up and down, and it never goes above some number plus b, and it never goes below some number minus b. If the system is stable, this is enough to tell me, without knowing anything more about the input, that maybe there's some other set of bounds, plus or minus c, that's enough that the output will always stay within them. Okay, so you can sort of think stability is about what's going on in the vertical axis. And if it's bounded, it says as long as I know the input stays within here, there has to be some limit on how big the output could get. It could get really big, but not infinite. Okay, sort of the, uh, just to state the other side of the coin, if the system is unstable, Then, yeah, clean that up. Then I can find some input signal, x of n, that is bounded, that makes the magnitude of y of n go to infinity for any bound. So no matter how tight or how small you want to put it, one volt, millivolts, or, or something else, I can still find some finite input that makes the output become infinite. Okay, so that's how I show that it's unstable. Okay, so let's look at, at some examples of how this works. Let me start this on a, a clean page. So I go through th uh, three quick examples here. There's really not a lot more to it for the general case. So the first example is imagine I have a system where the output y of n is 3 times x of n minus 3 minus 2 times x of n minus 4. All right, so this is my system, and we're going to check and say, is this stable? Well, again, we start from the same place. We assume the input is bounded. So we say, if you tell me, so we're assuming it's bounded here. So we're saying, if the input is a bounded input, but I don't know anything else about it, we're asking, can I find a capital C so that y of n is less than or equal to that C? a mess. Let's clean that up too. Okay, so that's just straight from the definition. I'd like to find this in terms of b. So let's start. We say, well, I'm trying to find a bound on y of n. Let's start with that. So we say, well, I know y of n, magnitude of y of n is going to be the magnitude of this whole equation. So 3x of n minus 3 
minus 2x of n minus 4. And now we use properties of addition and subtraction. We know that the magnitude of a difference is less than or equal to the, the magnitudes of the individual ter terms added. We say the most this could be would be 3 times the magnitude of x of n minus 3 and 2 times the magnitude of x of n minus 4. All right, so that's just a basic property when I have the sum or difference of two things and I take its absolute value I can put an upper bound on this. Then the next property I use here is I look at this and say well each of these terms here is a product. Right? So a product I say the magnitude of a product is in fact exactly equal to the product of the magnitudes. Right? We know that from working with complex numbers or real numbers. So we can say this is equal to 3x of n minus 3 magnitude plus the magnitude of 2. I can pull that out in front. Okay, and so now I'm saying, well, I need an upper bound on this. And so if I go on to the next page, I can say, well, I know an upper bound on both of these things. X of n is always less than or equal to b. So I can say that this is always going to be the magnitude of y of n, carrying that over, is going to be less than or equal to 3 times b plus 2 times b. So that's 5b. So if I set... my capital C equal to 5b, then knowing the magnitude of x of n is less than or equal to b guarantees that the magnitude of y of n will be less than or equal to c equal to 5b. And so there's our proof. Okay, so we've shown that this system is stable. If you're not used to doing these kind of arguments or proofs, you can almost sort of pretend it's like a contest between you and one of your friends, where your friend's going to say, well, I'll guarantee you this, in I'm not going to tell you anything about this input, but I'll guarantee that it's less than B, and it's up to you to say, well, based on that, can I, I can come up with a guarantee of how big the output will get. Conversely, if you think it's unstable, <clears throat> then you have to be the, the contrarian, you have to uh, be the one who, no matter what your friend says, you find a way to make things blow up. So if, if your friend says the imp uh, input is less than or equal to 1, you could say, well, I could still find something less than 1 that makes the output blow up, and so on. So let's look at, at, at another example here. We'll do uh, two more examples. So for this new system, let's say, what if y of n is 2 to the x of n. Right, so again, it's the same approach. We're going to say, well, if it's helpful to write out what we're trying to show. We say, if x of n is bounded above by b, is y of n less than or equal to c. Right, that's how we check for stability. And sometimes, particularly with systems like this that are memoryless, right, where the output is just a current function of the input, sometimes I find it a good idea intuitively to sort of make a sketch of the input versus output. It doesn't have to be a perfect sketch, but it's just enough to get you an idea of saying, well, let's see, if x were 0, I'll be at 1 here, and after that I'll blow up. And if I go to the left, for negative powers of x, y is going to get smaller and smaller. Right? It's going like 1 over 2 to the x, well, 2 to the absolute value of x. Right? So I don't need to necessarily label a whole bunch of points. And the reason for this is, at first glance, some people look at this and say, oh, look, the output's going up, going unbounded. But in fact, <clears throat> if I tell you x is between plus and minus b, then that's enough to to sort of draw a rectangle and say, well, yeah, as long as I'm in this range here, I can put a limit on how big y could get. I could pick this point here. And in fact, this one is pretty straightforward, right? If I say, well, what's the magnitude of y of n? We can say that's the magnitude of 2 of x of n. Right? And we can say, well, this has to be less than or equal to 2 to the b, because we know that x is less, we're assuming x is less than or equal to b. So we just set c equal to 2b, and we've proven it's stable. So I guess 
should have done that on the uh, previous page too. I should have made it clear that that this is saying the system is stable. It's always good to finish off your argument by stating clearly what you've you've shown. Okay, so again, and this maybe is a little different from what I said a minute ago. I don't maybe worried people get confused. I'm saying for memoryless systems, which this is right, where the output now only depends on the input now. I can make a plot of x versus y. So this isn't sort of the oscilloscope plot of x versus time, but x versus y. And then I'm looking for to see if I can put a limit on how things blow up or not. I, if the system is stable, I should only see things go to infinity at one, at, as x goes to plus or minus infinity and not in the middle. So to, to sort of make that clear, let's do one more example where, where it's going to turn out not to be stable and see how things look different. And again, this will be a memoryless system, but what if I say that y of n is 1 over x of n. Right, we meant <coughs> so the output now is the reciprocal of the input. Now if I go draw that, I say, well, again, this is a memoryless system. Right, The output only depends on the input. Now if I go draw this, I say, well, as x goes to 0, y does go to infinity, right? So this is, in fact, a hyperbola. It looks something like this. And, in fact, as x goes to infinity, y is going to 0. And then I ha do have to worry about right, plus and minus versions. But, again, it looks like this. As I approach 0 from the, from the left, I'm also going to minus infinity. So this is a good hint that this system is unstable because it says I can get a very small input and make things get arbitrarily large for, for y. Right, so this is, turns out to be unstable. Right, you can say for I can I can find you know, x of n equal to some epsilon. So just the constant signal x of n can get arbitrarily small, so that the magnitude of y of n is greater than any C I want to choose, right? Another, I guess that, that's another way to, to show something is unbounded, right? It says I can always find some value of the X that will make Y get arbitrarily large. So you can't put any bound on Y. And so I can make Epsilon very small. As I get smaller and smaller, it would be less than any. If I pick this B, I can say, well, I can still get inside that and make Y arbitrarily big. And if I moved B in a little more, it would still blow up. So if I want, for example, if I suppose I choose, if I want to, to ch the challenge is to say, can I, I make magnitude of y of n greater than or equal to any c with x of n less than or equal to any b, and I can choose x of n, say, to be equal to the smaller, let me start this on a new line, choose x of n to be equal to the smaller, I'll say either 1 over 2c or b, whichever is the smaller, right? Because if b is less than 1 over 2c, then the output will be greater than 2c. So this proves the system is unstable. Okay, so there's our quick overview of stability and some examples of how to prove it. We go back again to the, the first slide just to remind you of the definition. So again, the main idea of stability is that bounded inputs give us bounded outputs. And we say that if, to make that formal, we say that if the magnitude of x of n is less than or equal to b, then the system is stable if we can find some other constant c, which will be the upper and lower bounds here, so that the output is always within that range. Okay, see you next time.